Honesty, very gentle, and let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He has come for us, this Jesus. He's the hope for all mankind. He has come for us, the Messiah. To give us life. From God, our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born a Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He has come for us, this Jesus. He's the hope for all mankind. He has come for us, the Messiah, born to give us life. Was born to give us life. Oh, ah. mm, that's a nasty piece of ice. Careful, Mary Beth. I don't want you or our baby to get hurt. No, I don't want to hurt the baby. I wish you would stop saying our baby. You know as well as I do, we're going to lose this in the same way that we lost Mickey Jr. Oh. Mary Beth, we don't know for sure that will happen. But even if it does, having our baby for nine months is better than nothing. Look, the one thing we do know for certain since we found Jesus is that Whatever he chooses for us will be what is best. I know. I know. I just want so desperately for this baby to know it's real mom and dad. But you're right. God sees the big picture of our lives and we just see the small. It's a good thing our Heavenly Father is so patient. Patient. I really have a problem getting the hang of that P word. <laughs> yeah. Patience is a tough one, all right. We just have to keep asking him for his help and for his strength. I mean, what's he going to do? Say no to that request? Hey, look, Mary Beth. I think I just found us a place to stay. Come on, let's go talk to her. Oh, Michael, no. Oh, she looks really rough. Let's just go on down a bit further. I know it's not much, but I think this is the best offer we're going to be getting for a while. Oh, you're absolutely right. Come on, let's go talk to her. That's At least spirit. we can warm up by our fire for a little. What do you want? Well, uh, I couldn't help but noticing that there was an empty box next year's, and I wondered if it belonged to anyone. That was Charlie's. Took him away this morning. Why are you so interested? Well, my wife and I need a place to stay, and I could tell you take such good care of your property. I knew you'd make a good neighbor. Who are you? How do you end up here? My name is Michael Brainerd, and this is my wife, Mary Beth. And you are? I'm Case. What's it to you? Well, Case, um, we've hit on some hard times recently. 
We stayed at several places, but you know how it is. Eventually the cops catch on. You gotta move on, you know what I mean? That's a polite way of putting it. Those jerks can be a real pain sometimes. They have saved my head once or twice, too. Yeah, they have their jobs to do and orders to follow. I guess we can't argue with that. Michael, I really need to sit down. Please, can we just use the box? My wife is due to have her baby soon. She really needs to rest. Guess you'll want to be sharing the fire, too. You mean, you mean it's all right for us to stay? Oh, thank you. See, I told you God would supply. He is faithful. Let me get everything ready. Hey, Case. Thanks. I mean that. Now you just remember, there'll be no loud music or blaring TV. This is quiet neighborhood, you know. <laughs> what? You two can't take a joke? Uh. Oh, good. <laughs> <clears throat> so, you two are having a, having a kid. Yeah, pretty soon, maybe even by Christmas. Great. There is my peace and quiet. Squalling kid on the way. It's just great. Well, I think I have everything ready. Let's go in and rest for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Let's see, where were we? Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You know, it always amazes me how the Lord knows which readings I so desperately need each day. Not the fact that he knows what I need, but just the fact that I'm important to him. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Like, how even after everything I've done, yeah, I'm still important to him and to you. I'm just so grateful. I can't imagine going through everything without having Jesus. Fact is, I couldn't have. Yeah, me neither. We really are blessed. None of this would be so bad if only we still had little Mickey with us. I know. And I'm the one to blame. Oh, Michael, I'm sorry. I did not mean to lay that guilt on you again. You made the mistake and you paid your price. God has forgiven you and so have I. I just know he's gonna work this out. I just know it. See, there's that P word, patience. You know, I didn't know it at the time, but God was really looking out for me when he brought you into my life. I gotta say, not many guys have had the privilege of marrying someone who's so loving and forgiving. I'm thankful for that, Mary Beth. You need to lie down. It's been a long day. I know you're tired. Yes, I am tired. Thanks for taking such good care of me, Michael.
boy. These two are a real piece of work. They're cold and hungry. They live in a box, about to have a kid any second now. They call themselves blessed. Must be the cold messing with their brains. about when you look at me I know we're not the fairy tale you've dreamed we'd be you wore the veil you walked the aisle you took my hand and we dove into a mystery How I wish we could go back to simpler times Before all our scars and all our secrets were in the light Now on this hallowed ground we drawn the battle lines Will we make it through the night? It's gonna take much more and promises this time only God could change our minds maybe you and I were never meant to be complete could we just be broken together if you can bring your shattered dreams and I'll bring mine could healing still be spoken and save us? The only way will last forever is broken together. God could change our minds Maybe you and I were never meant to be complete Could we just be broken together? If you can bring your shattered dreams and I'll bring mine Could healing still be save us the only way will last forever the only way will last forever it's broken together before you're out of this area. I really don't like exposing you to such squalor. It does make me nervous. If you hadn't taken that wrong turn and run out of gas, we'd probably still be sitting safe in our car this very minute. Well, it is your fault after all. Did I or did I not tell you to take a left? You did. But in the past, you have been wrong every single time. Well, I figured, let's save time this once. I'll go in the opposite direction right off. Wouldn't you know, 
You choose this time to develop your sense of direction. <laughs> we women really do know how to keep men on their toes, don't we? Well, it is truly a learning experience, that's for sure. Yes, it surely is. What are you looking at, lady? Haven't you ever seen a bum before? Case, we're not bums. We're just on hard times right now. Don't mind her. She just thrives on being cantankerous. You two look cold. Why don't you come over here and warm yourselves by the fire? Thank you. It is rather chilly today. I'm afraid we've taken a wrong turn and gotten a bit lost. What would you know about chilly? Well, with your fancy coat and gloves and all. <laughs> Try calling that your home for a little while. Then you might earn the right to complain. Case, stop being rude. They're exactly where God wants them to be. Just like we are. Some God. Yes, he is. He knows what we need, and when we need it, he provides. So, you need a house. Well, where is it? Why, right there. A week ago, we came here, and God gave us a brand new house. Get real. Sure can't be accused of being a big spender, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, Case, come on. He provides. That's all that matters. How much is entirely up to him? You sound like you really believe that. Yes, we really do believe that. You look like you will be delivering soon. How will you get to the hospital? Well, if there's no money for the hospital, then there's no need to worry about how to get there. But you can't deliver here. It's not sterile. Oh, please. Well, God knows what my baby and I need. I'll just have to trust him. But, pardon me, but I don't know your name. I'm sorry. I'm Mary Beth Brainerd. This is my husband, Michael. And this is our friend, Case. Well, I'm Jeffrey, and this is my wife, Jennifer. If you wouldn't mind giving us some directions, we will be on our way. We still have much to do. Where do you want to go? To the nearest filling station, please. Okay. Uh, just go down this road, take a left on Elm, go one block, take a right on 13th, go two blocks, and there's the filling station. Thank you. Uh, come along, Jennifer. We really must hurry. But Jeffrey, we can't leave these people here like this. Here's fifty dollars. At least you can buy some warm food. Uh, now let's go. Well, well, thank you. God bless you. Wow. Hey, Case. Say, you wouldn't mind going and uh, keeping an eye on Mary Beth while I go get us some food and hot drink? Oh, great. Me babysit while you go get you and your wife food. No, Case. I was going to get you food, too. Look, a week ago when we came here, we had nothing. You shared your fire and your box with us. Why wouldn't we share what we have with you? No one has before. So why should I think you'd be any different? Oh, Case, we're different. God loves us and, and we love him. When he gives us something, he expects us to share it. Oh, don't give me that look, Case. Michael and I care whether you believe it or not. Whatever we have, we're going to always share it with others. See the light of day, 
I don't have a window. You don't hear me when I pray. Nights are getting colder since you took my heart away. I keep hearing people say, Why is she living in a box? Fragile at the seams From tears and broken dreams She's hiding from the light of day All the things they used to be They don't really matter When you're living in the streets Trying to find the answer For the emptiness you feel For the wounds that never heal They say they trials that have come my way. They say you will provide. You sent your son to die. Yet you have left me here to stay. Why am I living in a box? No one understands me. I'm still living in a box. Yes, they think I'm crazy. If I give myself away, Will you answer when I say, why am I living in a box? Living in a box. Why am I living in a box? Oh, I sure am glad we are safely back in our lovely home, aren't you, dear? Darling, I'm talking to you. Aren't you glad to be home? Oh, I'm so sorry, dear. I just can't get those poor people out of my mind. I actually feel guilty sitting here in such comfort when they are cold and hungry. Uh, look, we did our part. And they are not hungry. I just gave them $50. And that was wonderful of you, darling. But how long will that last? What then? Well, uh, look, we don't even know if they will buy food with that money. Uh, how do you know they didn't just head to the nearest liquor store? Oh, I know they didn't do that. No, there was something different about them. You could see it in their eyes. You could feel it. All I could feel was glad to get out of there. I wonder where the children are. Where is Agnes? Agnes? Yes? Good evening, Mrs. Duncan. Mr. Duncan. Agnes, where are the children? Oh, the children? Oh, yes, the children. Uh, Priscilla has gone to the Lancasters. She said she would return at 10 o'clock tonight. And the boys? Oh, yes, JT and Colin were swimming laps in the pool, but have since retired to their room to dress for dinner. And I'm preparing mushrooms and peas. Very good. Thank you, Agnes. Certainly. Our daughter has been spending a great deal of time at the Lancasters recently. I think she has a crush on her friend's older brother. She is far too young to be talking to, or even thinking of boys. Darling, she is 12, going on 13. What do you mean? She's not allowed to date until she is at least 21. Darling, you have such a short memory. You married me when I was 19. And do you think you're going to keep her from dating until she's 21? I doubt it. Well, we were very different. We were responsible and mature for our ages. Well, yes, we were. But Priscilla is also very responsible and mature for her age. Yes, I suppose she is. But she is my little girl. I don't want just anyone to have her. And when the right one does come along, which won't be for some time, 
I will insist on a long engagement. <laughs> Ooh, Daddy's having a real problem letting go of his little girl. Don't worry, dear. She's not going anywhere yet. Who's going where? Are we going someplace? No one's going anywhere. Except in for dinner shortly. What made you so late tonight? I thought you said you'd be back at four. Oh, we ran into some problems and were detained. Did you have car trouble, Father? Well, in a manner of speaking, you could say that. We got lost and ran out of gas. How can you get lost and run out of gas? Well, I suggested we take a left on Elm, but your father took a right. Yes, but your mother has... Ah, forget it. I've been up this lane once before. So, what happened? Well, we ended up in a less than desirable neighborhood, but we were able to obtain the proper directions to get home. We ended up in a homeless section, but we met the nicest couple and an eccentric old lady. Well, the couple gave us directions. It was a sad situation, but they were most helpful. A homosexual? You were with bombs? Colin Joseph Duncan! They were not bombs. Just because people fall on difficult circumstances does not make them bombs. Why? Father the said that people like that just don't want to work and they expect other people to give them money whenever they ask. JT, you were only telling part of what I said. I suppose I did say that, but those people are in the minority. There are many people who lose their jobs through no fault of their own and have no savings to hold them over until they find other work. Without money for mortgage or rent payments, they end up with no homes. Wait, no homes? Where do they sleep? How do they eat? Well, son, they have ways of surviving, but they need help. Hopefully, those of us who have more can help them until they can find work again. Yes, like your mother and I did. We gave them $50. That was very good of you, Father. I'm sure they're very thankful to you for doing your part. Listen, boys, $50 will not last very long. Any day now, this couple's going to have a... I mean, the woman is with child. And they live in a box and never know from day to day if they will even have food to eat. Well, we best go into dinner now. You know Agnes doesn't like her cooking to get cold. Will you be keeping in touch with Mr. Brainerd, Father? I mean, to see if he needs more help? We'll see, JT. Why don't we discuss this over dinner? Maybe we can come up with some sort of plan to help them. If Agnes is making her peas and mushrooms tonight, I'd be glad to let them have mine. <laughs> what if I told you you have the power Give someone hope beyond their wildest dreams. What if I told you it's right there in your hands? In your hands. It's hard to imagine how something so small can make all the difference, tear down the tallest wall. What if December looked different this year? What if we all just give this Christmas away? If there's love in your heart, don't let it stay there. Give this Christmas away, and your life will be changed by the gifts you receive when you give this Christmas away. Feeding the hungry and serving the poor It's 
telling the orphan you're not forgotten anymore it's doing what love does even when no one's watching you give this christmas away if there's love in your heart don't let it stay there give this christmas away Life will be changed by the gifts you receive when you give this Christmas away. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so we could be His hands, His feet, His love. receive when you give this Christmas, give this Christmas Hey, Case, what you dreaming of? Me? Yeah, about as much as I'm dreaming of Elvis Presley showing up on my doorstep. Ah, you had a good night's sleep, I see. You're all frisky and tight-tongued. It's music to my ears, Case. Oh, you sweet-tongued rascal, you. I'm sure my day's gonna be just great now. Of course it will, Case. Well, who do we have here? New tenants. Hmm. Hi. My name is Michael Brainerd, and this is my wife, Mary Beth. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Mr. Brainerd. Mrs. Brainerd, my name's Butch. Please, just call me Michael. And please, call me Mary Beth. It's a pleasure to meet you, Butch. Well, a lovely name for a lovely lady. Knock it off, Butch. The cops are going to commit you one of these days. Easy now, darling. Do I see a green-eyed monster lurking in there? <laughs> in your dreams. Get some coffee and be quiet. Mm. Well, hey now, this is the real McCoy. Now, where did you get real coffee? Well, we had a couple of hoity-toities drop in yesterday. Mm. Guess they didn't like the smell of our brew. So they gave Michael over here some money for an upgrade. Well, that was very nice of them to share. And nice of you, too. Thanks. Speaking of which. Mm. Hello again. Oh, I hope you don't mind us just dropping in like this. Well, how nice to see you. I hope you're not lost again. Oh, no, not this time. You've been on my mind all night. I just had to come back. I hope you don't mind. And who do we have here? Oh, let me introduce you to my children. This is my daughter, Priscilla, hmm. and my sons, JT and Colin. And I'm Jennifer, Jennifer Duncan. Well, it's very nice to meet you, lovely ladies. <laughs> and it's very nice to meet you, fine gents. Come on, you're no Don Juan, you know. Well, I think it's very nice to meet you all. These are for you, sir. They're some of my dad's old things, but he doesn't need them anymore. Are you sure? Does he know? These look almost brand new. Oh, I'm sure. He has plenty. Well, well thank you. You know, I'm sure Butch and I could use some of these. Me? Oh, thank you very much. Oh, and please, thank your father, too. 
Well, here are some of my mom, mom's, some of my mom's old things, but I don't think they'll fit you. Colin! <laughs> I think you are absolutely right. But you know, some of them will fit my friend Case here, and I'll save some for after the baby comes. Wait, you're mm -hmm. gonna get a baby? Colin, don't be such a stooge. Mother told you that before we left. I'm not a stooge, I just forgot. Here is the chicken casserole. It's still warm. Maybe you'd like to set it by the fire. Whoa, that sure smells like a slice of heaven. <laughs> what would you know about heaven, Butch? Hey, you wanna hear a story? Come on, I'll tell you a story. Hey, you can come too if you want. This is most kind of you, and of your children. Yeah, I gotta say, you've really been over backward for us. Thank you. I am so glad we got lost yesterday. I just had no idea. Well, God does work in mysterious ways. I'm glad you came too. Oh, thank you. Here are some things for your baby. Ah, baby clothes. I think this is where I'm gonna head out. If you ladies will excuse me. Oh, look, so little. It is surprising, isn't it? I remember the day Colin came home from the hospital. He was the size of one of my dolls. Now look at him. Mother says we grow up too fast. Would you like to go listen to some of Butch's stories? Yes, I would. First babies can be a bit frightening, you know. But don't worry. Most of what you need to know just seems to come naturally. Oh, this isn't my first child. I had a son. Oh, I'm so sorry. What happened, or is it too painful to talk about? Michael got fired from his job. He hadn't told his boss that he had been in prison. Prison? You see, before we had Jesus in our lives, Michael made some poor decisions, and he ended up in jail for two years, leaving me to raise our son Mickey Jr. alone. While he was in prison, we both found the Lord, and after his sentence was up, he eagerly went in search for a job. Unfortunately, it is hard for an ex-con to find a job. So, in desperation, he withheld that information. Oh, how dreadful. But I still don't see where losing your son comes in. No job means no money. We lost our home and eventually ended up here on the streets. When social services found that out, they took Mickey Jr. Oh! They said it was only temporary until Michael could find work again, but he hasn't been able to find work. And now I'm so scared they're going to take this baby too. Oh, you poor, poor dear. Oh, there must be something we can do. There has to be a way. I know. I'll talk to Jeffrey. You know the old saying, two heads are better than one. Well, maybe your husband will think of something. Who knows? But one thing I do know, my God is in control. It is hard to trust. But if I didn't have Jesus in my life, I don't think I would have made it this far. But he has been helping us and providing along the way. Why, his latest gift has been bringing us your family. Oh, I am so ashamed. I wish I had your kind of faith and trust. Instead, I've allowed my wealth and privilege to blind me to the things of God. 
I haven't been living like he would want me to. But all that is going to change as of now. Privilege also has its positive side, you know. I know some very important people who will do a great deal for me. I will begin making contacts immediately. I will find answers, Mary Beth. You can count on it. Hey, ladies, don't you think it's time to break out the fine china? This heavenly aroma has almost driven me crazy. You can't be driven to a place you're already at. Case, why don't you just fess up? You're fond of me and you know it. Get your hands off me, you old fool. Case, Case, give me your answer true. Just say the word, Case, and I'll be your old fool. You already are a fool. Well, you know, I think sampling that casserole sounds like an excellent idea. Mrs. Duncan, would you and your children care to join us? <sighs> yeah, right. Baby Mother, Wood has been telling us the best stories. Yes, Mother, and would you believe it? Did you know that Case used to live in New Orleans when the hurricane came through? That she saw the big wall of water? Yeah, Case, why don't you tell him this story? Really? You were there for Hurricane Katrina. It's no big deal. That happened a long time ago. Yeah. We've been having the best time, Mother. May we stay longer, please? Well, we would love to. Yes. Thank you very much. Great. I guess I can scrounge up a few extra plates. Just be careful. Some of them have chipped edges. Wouldn't want you to hurt your pretty little fingers. Very gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He has come for us. Jesus, he's the hope for all mankind. He has come for us, the Messiah, born to give us life. From God, our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came. To certain shepherds, what tidings of the same? How that in Bethlehem was born a son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He has come for us, this Jesus. He's the hope for us. Come for us, the Messiah, born to give us life. He was born to give us life. Well, we had the best time, Dad. But just so funny, and he tells the best stories. Is that so, son? Just who is this Butch? He's a friend of Case's. He used to work at a factory making machine parts, but he was injured. He could never get his old speed back, so he was laid off. He says he can fix just about anything, but it seems like no one is interested in hiring his smart hands. I think he likes Case, don't you, Priscilla? Well, I'm not pleased that your mother took you to that area in the first place. And secondly, 
I'm not so sure we should do anything more. Do anything no, more? No, 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 Jennifer, I can't believe you took the children down to that place. It is an unsavory section, and you should not have exposed them to that. It's called life, Jeffrey. I was oblivious to it myself before yesterday. I thought it would be good for the children to learn that there are people far less privileged than they, and they should be using what they have to help others. But you do not even know these people. Why, anything could have happened to you and the children in that area. Jeffrey, haven't you always complimented me on being such a good judge of character? Can't you trust me on that this time? I just had to go back. And when the children saw me gathering things to take with me, well, they wanted to come too. I thought it would be good for them. I'm just afraid you're letting your soft heart rule the situation. That is all. Well, maybe at first you're right. But while I was there, I got a good look at something in myself that I was not very proud of. You and I claim a personal relationship with Jesus. Well, speaking for myself, I have not been cultivating that relationship. I have been so complacent in my comforts that I haven't been listening to how Jesus might want me to live. I'm ashamed of myself for that, and I mean to change it. But what makes you think that you should even be involved? Have you asked yourself why the man isn't working? Certainly there is some kind of job he could be doing. Oh, people. And they won't hire him because he's been in prison. What? He's an ex-convict? Jeffrey, don't be a snob. People make mistakes. Michael has come to know the Lord. He has repented of his sins, and God has forgiven him. It's not for us to judge. Please, would you just go down there and talk to him? I know you will think differently once you do. Please, would you just go talk to him? All right, I'll talk to him. You do what you feel you must, but I am making no promises, understood? Oh, yes, I understand. But <laughs> while you're there, could you find out what kind of work you can do? With all your contacts, I just know you can help him find some work. Jennifer, I said no promises. Okay, okay. Oh, I wish it wasn't so late. I wanted to begin making some phone calls immediately. Well, I guess it'll have to wait until morning. Are you about ready to retire, dear? Yes, I believe I am. It's been a rather exhausting day. Well, you go ahead. I'll be around along shortly. Silent night, cold dark night, make their world warm and bright. See them live just for Him. Mend their broken heart. See my world glimmering while they're out shivering. Should we be quibbling while your children cry? Change my heart. 
tonight. See my world like a dream while they're out in the street. Am I just playing church while the world is getting worse? Silent night, holy night, all is calm and all is bright. Lovely day out. If you say so. Well, I have fixed your coffee nice and strong, just the way you like it. There you are. Thank you, Agnes. Certainly. Good morning, darling. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Yes, I feel quite rested, thank you. Oh, I am so glad. You will be seeing the Brennards today, right? Yes, I'll see them. Just remember what I said. I am making no promises. Oh, I remember. But what you need to remember is that I know you very well. And I just know that you're going to want to help them once you talk to them. Jennifer, don't push me. I wouldn't think of it. Well, I must be off. <sighs> what do you have planned for your day? Well, I need to make some contacts. And then it's lunch with Michelle. After that, it's off to the hospital to read to the ladies. That should keep you out of trouble. Cute, dear. Really cute. Do be careful. I will see you at dinner. You have a good day. Oh, Mr. Duncan, you don't look like you're looking for directions today. <laughs> no, I uh, came to see you, Michael. Oh, is something wrong? We didn't ask your wife and kids to come yesterday. They just showed up with clothes and food. I know, I know. Uh, good morning, Mary Beth. Case. Good morning, Mr. Duncan. Did I just hear the name Mr. Duncan? <laughs> Mr. Duncan, you sure do have a nice family. You must be right proud of those kids. Yes, I am, Mr. Uh... Oh, Butch is my name. I like to stick around these parts and help out where I can. You like the coffee, that's what you like. Well, that's true. Uh, hey, uh, I heard a great deal about you from the dope boys, Butch. Mm, well, don't believe everything you hear, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> oh, they were good reports, I assure you. Mm. <laughs> uh, Michael, I was wondering if I could have a word with you. Uh, in private. Oh, well, sure. Do you guys mind? Mm. So, um, 
um, what's this all about? Well, it, uh, it seems my wife has become a champion of your cause, and, and she wants me to help. It's just that first, well, I need to... You need to give me a background check, don't you? I do need to know more about you. I only know a few facts, like uh, that you have no work, um, you've had a child taken away, and you were in prison? Yeah. It's not much of a resume, is it? No, it's not, but I do want to be fair. Would you be willing to go into more detail about your past? Well, um, I guess since you asked and you seem like a fair man, I'll tell you. But I warn you, it's not going to be pretty. See, a while ago, I, I made some pretty foolish, foolish decisions. I'd like to speak to Senator Martin, please. This is Jennifer Duncan. Look, I know he's a busy man, but if you'll just give him my name, I'm sure he will speak to me. Anthony, oh, how good of you to take my call. Oh, yes, he's fine. Yes, the children are indeed growing. Anthony, I have a problem that I know you will want to help me with if you can. You see, the other day, Jeffrey and I were... So, anyway, here I am just, I guess, waiting for God to show me what's next. I keep applying for jobs, I really do. But I'm not an idiot. I know most of my applications just end up in the trash can. I will uh, need some time to process what you have told me. I'm not certain as to what to do, but I, I will think about it. <laughs> well, hey, I, I can't ask for anything more, I guess. Thanks for at least giving me a shot, Mr. Duncan. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, now, if you don't mind, I think I'll stay a bit longer and warm up before I leave. <laughs> hey, it's not my fire. Look, miss, this is Mrs. Jeffrey Duncan III, and I demand to speak to your superior. Fine, I'll wait. This is Jennifer Duncan speaking. To whom am I speaking? And what position do you hold? Fine, I wish to speak to you concerning a serious error that your department has made. It concerns the withholding of information on a child's whereabouts. Not this time you don't. Well, let me tell you what I know. At that point, I think you will clearly see that the boundaries have been seriously overstepped. Yes, sir, your wife, one special woman. Oh, thank you, I quite agree. Say, I understand from the boys that you worked for a machine factory? Yeah, I did. Boy, they ended up in a real mess when they got rid of me. See, I was the one who kept all the machines running, smooth as butter. Wasn't my job or anything, but I always liked tinkering around with stuff, so I just did it. They thought they were going to save a bunch of money by getting rid of me, but instead, they've had to pay far more in repair bills. Uh, so you like to work with your hands, well... Why haven't you tried getting a job in that line of work? Well, now, I you listen, mister. Butch here has not been sitting on his hands doing nothing. If you think that's the case, well, you can think again. Case. Take it easy, all right? Look, I've tried to get a job, and, you know, I'm going to keep trying. There just aren't a whole lot of jobs out there for a man my age, you know? Not that I'm old or anything. I guess they'd rather give the jobs to the younger guys. What about you, Case? What kind of work do you do? You ask a lot of questions, you know. What, are you writing a book on bums or something? Case, come on, take it easy. Maybe he can help. Why would he want to help us? What's in it for him? Oh, there's nothing in it for me, Case. I'm not even sure I'll be able to help. It's just, well, I'm interested in you, Case. The boys were quite taken with you. Hmm. Taken? With me? Whatever for? Uh, they said that you had worked in a hospital during Hurricane Katrina. 
And that the storm destroyed your home too? That's right. She was real brave. A real hero too. Really? Yes, indeed. One time. She, that's enough, Butch. That happened a long time ago and I don't care to relive it. All right, don't get your dander up. I can't help it if I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> just, just forget about it. I'm nothing special. Well, uh, I best be going. Mm. Uh, Michael, uh, thank you for talking with me. <laughs> it's a very pleasure to meet you, Mr. Duncan. I'll see you, Butch. <laughs> Yes, yes, Mr. Mayor. I certainly will tell Mrs. Duncan that you called. Yes, goodbye. Ah, oh, Agnes, has Mrs. Duncan arrived home yet? Not yet. She called about 10 minutes ago and said she would be arriving shortly. Thank you, Agnes. Certainly. And if that phone rings one more time, I shall go through the roof. <sighs> I'll get it, Agnes. Duncan's residence, Jeffrey Duncan speaking. Ah, Anthony, what a pleasant surprise. What can I do for you? She did. Uh, what, what was that all about? Really? Yes, she can be a bit tenacious when she feels she has a worthy cause. Well, I quite agree. She is a special lady. Really? Yes? Uh-huh. Oh, yes, she is. Well, I am proud of her, too. Uh, thank you for sharing that with me. I'll tell her. Good night. Hello, darling. I'm so sorry I'm late. Hello, dear. I haven't been home long enough myself. Oh, Anthony just called. Oh, he did? What did he say? Did he find any singing out yet? He called to sing your praises to me. Oh, I'm just trying to listen more to the Lord. And how was the rest of your day? All the office. It was the same as usual. Is the office the only place you went? Was there something else I was supposed to be doing? Jeffrey Duncan, did you or did you not go to see the Brennards? Yes, I went to see them. I also met Butch. He is one of a kind, isn't he? That he is. He's done well keeping his sense of humor, despite the difficulties he's had. He sure has. Now, Case is a whole nother story. I 
think she's hiding behind her cantankerous persona. I think she's afraid of opening herself up to more hurt. You know, you're probably right. After all, you are a good judge of character. Does that mean you're going to help? I guess I can look into some possibilities. I knew it! I mean, I knew you'd see things the way I do once you talk to them. See what? After you talk to who? What's going on anyway? Your father went to see the Brannards. He's going to help them. What about Butch? What about Case? I think there's something we can do to help all of them. That's wonderful, Father. How long do you think it will take? Oh, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, being the president of a company does have, does, does have its advantages. Can we go see them tomorrow, Mother? I can't wait to let them know. I have a better idea. Why don't you go and invite them all for Christmas? Perhaps by then I will have everything worked out. This will make for an excellent Christmas surprise. Yes, indeed, Father. This is going to be the best Christmas ever. This is really cool. Uh, I mean, this is most exciting, Father. <laughs> Mother, I really love to get something special for the baby. May we do that? Oh, we surely can, my dear. <laughs> I told you, you have the power to give someone hope beyond their wildest dreams. What if I told you it's right there in your hands, in your hands? It's hard to imagine how something so small can make all the difference, tear down the tallest wall. What if December looked different this year? What if we all just give this Christmas away? If there's love in your heart, don't let it stay there. Give this Christmas away, and your life will be changed by the gifts you receive when you Feeding the hungry and serving the poor It's telling the orphan you're not forgotten anymore It's doing what love does even when no one's watching you Give this Christmas away If there's love in your heart, don't let it stay there this Christmas away and your life will be changed by the gifts you receive when you give this Christmas away for God so loved the world that he gave his only son If there's love in your heart, don't let it stay there. Give this Christmas away, and your life will be changed by the gifts you receive when you give this Christmas. Give this Christmas.
My stomach doesn't know what hit it. I haven't eaten that much in a long, long time. I think a little self-control may have been in order. Yeah, look who's talking. I noticed you were sure putting it away yourself. How come I'm not as miserable as you? Well, I guess you got a bigger stomach than I do. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I gotta say, we don't get a meal like that every day. That was very good. Yes, you turned what would have been just an ordinary day into something very special. Mary Beth is absolutely right. This has been fantastic. Thanks to all of you. <laughs> Thank you. It was very nice. I still can't figure out why y'all did this for us. That's a good question, Case. Uh, to be perfectly honest, Jennifer got me going. I must confess, I have forgotten that all I have is God's. I have taken my abundance so much for granted. He gave it to me, but I have not been using it for him. Jennifer reawakened the deeply buried memory, and now I want to be my Lord's servant. God's money? His servant? The credit really should go to Michael and Mary Beth. To us? Why? You've been through very difficult circumstances and have faced real hardship. And yet you continue to trust God with your very lives. You have this deep inner peace that shines through brightly. This is Christmas, a time to remember God's gift of Jesus to all who will receive him. Your example of faith and trust have given us more than we could ever repay. Jennifer and I are deeply grateful for your living testimony. Wow, that's humbling. But you know, that's also exciting. I mean, just think, if God hadn't put us out on the street, we might never have met you. That is quite true, and a frightening thought. You know, I once heard in a mission that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. I think I'm beginning to understand just what that might mean. Case, you and me, we're going to start going to that mission on a regular basis. Me and you? Well, sure, we're a team, right? I guess you could say that. Well, I, I think it's time for some gifts. Yes. yes. But you've done so much for us already. Yeah, this is a day that I'm never going to forget. Well, there's still more to come. Yes, indeed. I think we were all learning what it meant when Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I'm so excited. I could laugh till I split a gut. Colin. Oh, hey. I think you might have overheard me say that the other day. <laughs> Listen, Colin, it was very crude of me to make that appalling statement. I should have remarked that I was so excited I could uh, laugh and dance for joy till my sides ached. Okay. These envelopes are for the two of you. Michael, why don't you open yours first? And then Mary Beth, you may open yours. This, this is a job interview. Mary Beth, I have a job interview on January 2nd. Ah, it is our pleasure. How about opening yours, Mary Beth? Ah, Michael, the Duncans have leased an apartment for us for the next few months until we can get back on our feet again. I helped fix it up. It has everything you need. In fact, you'll be staying in it. Yeah. JT and I helped too, huh? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what we did a little later. Oh, Butch, here's something for you. For me? Probably a bill for all the food you ate. <laughs> oh, Mr. Duncan. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Aren't you gonna tell the others much? Oh, you guys aren't going to believe this. 
I got a job with a manufacturing company, and it includes housing. Plus, a letter of recommendation from Mr. Duncan. <laughs> and this is for you. Oh boy, what is it, Case? Oh my. They got me a job at the local hospital. And they're letting me stay here until I can find a place of my own. Wow. That's a really great gift, Case. Say, you wouldn't mind uh, hearing a little secret of mine, would you? Oh, what dumb thing are you going to say now? Well, it's nothing real important. It's just that uh, I guess I do have a job now. <laughs> but I just can't live without your coffee, Case. So I thought, you know, maybe we could get hitched and you could make me all my coffee. You want to marry me for my coffee? Well, I kind of like you, too. <laughs> you like me? Well, don't go blabbing it all over the place. You know, Foist, I think there's some things in my own life I need to get straightened out. The way everybody talks about this Jesus makes me want to know him better. After that, who knows? Maybe we could get hitched. Coffee and all. But you surprise me sometimes. <laughs> Maybe you're not such a big lug after all. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Woo. OK, everyone. Everyone, I have one last surprise. But you have given so much already. Oh, this is just a little thing. But I know you'll like it. Hello, social services? Yes, this is Jennifer Duncan speaking. I have here with me Mrs. Brennan. Yes. Could you explain to her the arrangements that have been made? Hello. This is Mary Beth Brainerd. I've heard that Mrs. Duncan can be very persuasive. Yes. So we have a son, Mickey Jr. Oh. Well, we've been wondering so much. Oh, oh this is amazing news. Thank you. Bye. What did they say? What did they say about Mickey? The judge has taken another look at our case and is going to take another. And he's going to make a new ruling. Okay. It's now that you have a new job prospect. If everything goes well, Mickey Jr. could be released to us within the month. Oh. oh. What Good. a Christmas. No one would believe it. You know what? For once, you said something smart. Yeah, now I can tell. Now I can tell. JD and I fixed up Mickey's room and there are a ton of toys. <laughs> wow, what a surprise for Mickey, Colin. Now we have hope for the future of our family. You know, God has truly blessed us. God has blessed me too. This has truly been life changing for me. Michael, Mary Beth, I don't think you realize how much you have given us. I'm just completely overwhelmed by all of your generosity. And to think that God used us to inspire you. But even if we hadn't received all of these special blessings, we still would have Jesus, the greatest gift of all. From the high Lowly, the greatest mystery the world has ever known. How you left your majesty to embrace humanity. It awes and humbles me to be loved.
to the least and lowest you became as one with us in our grief and brokenness you suffered by our side from a cradle to the cross rising up victorious the messiah jesus born to us on that holy night what could i do but thank you what could i do but give my life to you Well, thank you for coming. We really appreciate uh, the community showing up for a local Christmas play. It really does the heart good. Um, really hope that you enjoyed our show tonight. And I really hope that, uh, that the message, the message was clear. And what a witness, a witness from, from two people with strong faith who have nothing in the world's eyes, yet they say they're blessed and they have in fact, everything. I hope that you feel moved, perhaps convicted. And if that's the case, you may be asking yourself, what can I do? What can I do? Well, um, we wanted to give you all an opportunity. If you feel led tonight and you feel convicted to, to make a contribution, we've, we've, we've put a cardboard box in the back and on the side, it's marked for the homeless. So if you feel like making a contribution, um, tonight's donations will go to the Dayton Area Church Community Aid Fund, which is a network of uh, local churches here within the Dayton area that fill needs, that fill needs like, like the homeless people that you saw here uh, portrayed tonight. Um, now we're gonna do some, some candle lighting and, uh, and, and Christmas songs, uh, we in, invite you to sing together. Um, so if you all will stand and uh, take out your candles. Um, one little uh, housekeeping note uh, for those of you with young children, um, please help to remind them to hold their candles upright once they've been lit. Um, if, if they tip their candles to the side, the wax will go everywhere on clothing and floors and so forth, so help to remember uh, to keep them upright. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Behold him, born the 
King of angels, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, oh, come, let us adore him, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore. 